The modern energy landscape is a complex web. We have oil, natural gas, nuclear, renewables like wind, and we have gas stations and power lines. Plus, batteries fit in the picture somewhere, and hydrogen power is on the rise. Let's parse all of this. Across this web, we primarily make use of energy in one of two forms, as electricity or fuel. Electricity involves electrons. Fuel, on the other hand, means molecules, which store energy. The electricity versus fuel distinction applies to the different ways we source and use energy. It also applies to the steps in between, moving energy and storing it. Generally, electricity is easy to move via power lines, but difficult to store. Fuel is the opposite. It's easy to store, but harder to move, requiring tankers, pipelines, and so on. The largest category of fuel-based sources are the fossil fuels, including coal, oil, and natural gas. This segment together accounts for roughly 75% of total energy offtake. These are high carbon emitting sources. There are also greener fuels, like nuclear, which releases little to no carbon. Nuclear accounts for roughly 3 to 4% of global energy. Fossil fuels and nuclear are considered non renewable resources. Eventually, they will run out. Biofuels, on the other hand, are considered a renewable fuel source. These come from feedstocks like corn and sugarcane and account for less than 1% of our energy today. Whether or not biofuels are green is a bit more complicated. Since they are combusted, they emit CO2. However, while alive and growing, biofuel crops absorb CO2 from the atmosphere, improving their net carbon impact. You may also hear the term traditional biomass energy. This refers to the burning of crop residues, wood, and other organic matter for heat. This is not the same as biofuel and is not considered a renewable resource but this is still a sizable slice of total energy, roughly 6%. The remaining 10 to 15% of our energy comes from electricity-based sources. These are the core renewables. Hydropower, meaning dams, wind, solar, and geothermal. Hydropower is the largest of these, accounting for 5 to 6% of global energy. Wind accounts for roughly 3%, and solar slightly less, around 2%. Wind is often further segmented as on versus offshore. Offshore generally involves larger, more efficient turbines built at greater cost. Solar is often further segmented by the underlying technology. Photovoltaic solar, or PV, which turns light into electricity directly, as in what you see on rooftops, and concentrated solar power, or CSP, which concentrates light via lenses into a heat source for steam power. CSP is limited to utility-scale facilities and high UV conditions, and is a significantly smaller segment. Wind and solar are both growing rapidly and are expected to be the leading renewable source in the coming decades. Many expect solar to become the dominant of the two. Geothermal is more niche, accounting for 1%. Remember our four levers for reducing atmospheric carbon? The first was to shift to lower emission sources. These include the electricity-based renewables, wind, hydro, geothermal, and solar, the fuel-based renewables, biofuels, and nuclear, a low-emission but non-renewable source. The second lever was to use less energy. Next, let's look now at the various ways energy is consumed.